Hey family, I'm Stephanie Wade. I'm Habasia, and I'm sitting here in my backyard <laughs> looking at it like uh, it's a miniature forest. <laughs> One day, <laughs> I am working on it being a food forest. So it's green now, y'all. I can't say I have bananas on the trees or figs on the trees but you know how it goes it's getting there even my hibiscus can be turned into a, a drink one day a nice tropical drink hibiscus and you can also eat them and put them in other things i have to research all of it but i'm telling you these plants are organic and edible so anyway, guys, how y'all doing? I decided just to get out of the house and make a quick video to touch base with you all. I've been watching YouTube videos this morning of the of different YouTubers that, yeah, I subscribe to some of them and watch, uh, watch some of them. Call in to a, a well, actually, just one. <laughs> my brother THC shout out brother but anyways I'm just having a little response to one of the videos I saw this morning it's like the videos are seeming like the housewives of wherever because <laughs> people who haven't been in a place even a year giving advice to people about being successful or not successful in business or whatever and trying to give you consultations or whatever let me give y'all a free word of advice from somebody who was in business before if you're not a success anywhere in business because you had no experience in it don't have a background in it you didn't run a business for anybody if it's not something that you have money to live on for about five years because <laughs> that's when a business usually becomes successful after five years so if you don't have that kind of money my advice is not to do a business thing you know not for the money anyways make sure you're doing it and you have savings in the bank that can get you through or retirement money or whatever other money that you have as a savings to actually live on because i don't want to have to say another time that it's no social systems in the motherland so you have to have your own money if you already have your streams of income just say you know how to do your business online and you're already doing it online, that's great. You can bring it with you because you know, an online business that you're already doing, that you're already successful at, and you know you can do it anywhere, well then, why not there? That'll be a, a fine place. But I was so concerned that I, I just couldn't not make a video like I said, the advice that was given was that if you think that you don't have enough money to start a business, that you should uh, do cooperative economics, meaning pool your money together with other people. Bad idea, guys. Until we form a relationship with people and we just say if you have a business with these people already in the united states and you're going to take that partnership to the mother man that's great 
but just meeting new people and just say you're going to put all the money in a pot and thinking that you're going to get a good result, somebody going to get anxious and try to figure out how to get the money quicker than five years. And you can actually lose your money twice as fast or however many times as fast with so many cooks in a pot. But they say too many cooks spoil the pot, you know, spoil the dish, spoil the meal, whatever. That's a bad idea. If you have a nonprofit organization and you're doing a, a helping somebody set up a cooperative, that's a total different thing. Uh, the object is not to make money when you're doing a nonprofit. It's to empower the people so they can get themselves to another level. So that's different, y'all. But individuals that actually need the money and they actually need the business to succeed right away, I do not advise any of y'all to fall for that okie doke of everybody putting their money together to do a business. A whole bunch of uh, people that don't have money to invest is a whole lot of people who will get upset if they lose their money. Because if you don't have the background for a business and you haven't tried it out, the majority of the businesses do go out of business within, excuse me, within five years. So my advice, save up enough money, do your research, go visit, see what actually are the needs. You know, do your market research. And then it's okay to go back. You are not a failure because you went and did your market research and went back home. Don't let somebody that's been there just a few months or going from place to place to place tell you what is success or not. Because the people that's going from place to place to place must have other streams of income online. They have to, because there's no way that you're running any business when you're going from place to place to place. So maybe you need to know <laughs> their secret of what they do it. And they probably not gonna want to share that. So anyway, my advice is don't just think everything is simple. Just because it seems good on paper to put your money together with a lot of other people that's also interested in having a business. If you do not already have a relationship with them, you do not know what will happen when you start putting that money together. That money may say, find me, and they may say, find me too. So just take my advice as an elder sister and don't do that. I name my video, I'm Africa, because I am Africa and you are Africa. Because Africa's born in us is Kwame Nkrumah say. We're not Africa because we born in Africa, but we are Africa because Africa is born in us. So we are Africa. No matter where you are, you can feel the ancestors. You know, they may be saying, come home, but they may not be saying, come home immediately and just stay. They may say, go do your market research. <laughs> Find out what you need to succeed and allow yourself enough money so when you go there, you won't be trying to live off of that business that you will understand. You have to spend money to make money, and that's serious business, you know? The other topic I want to touch on just a little bit is... 
Africans in the diaspora and Africans on the continent as being one people unity. <coughs> we are guys. I did, excuse me. I did intercultural exchange when I married a Nigerian <clears throat> and I adopted my last name, <coughs> excuse me, Mwade, which I keep to this day <clears throat> because my, my ancestry is West African. So why not keep my West African name, my Igbo name? It's the same as our children's name. They're adults now, but same as our grandchildren last name. So it's sharing your culture, becoming part of the people. Uh, nobody will make you wear anything. I personally get my clothes made when I travel because I like the control I have of something being made according to my specifications and it fits me. It's hard to find ready to wear clothes in, in the States, in the United States that actually fit me because the way my body is made. I have a sister body, a soul sister body. And so when I'm in the motherland, I have it easy for somebody to just make my clothes that fit. And all I gotta do is buy the fabric. And it's the fabric that I like, the colorful fabric that I like. How y'all liking this, y'all? It was in Ghana that I got it made. My earrings. And my necklace, y'all know how that is. That was from Cooperative Economics in Houston. So anyway, I'm gonna do a quick show and tell and then I'm getting out of here, y'all. See my fan? It was a gift in the Gambia from people that I considered friends at the time. <laughs> you know, I don't like to name drop. A letter opener, like back in the day when we get letters, but for bills too. Cause yes, I do still have a mailbox. And even if I didn't have a mailbox, I still pay my bills online y'all. Because it's ethical to pay what you owe somebody. Because if you owe me something, I want you to pay me. If I pay you to make something for me, I expect the product. Let me go on the side because somebody's starting to make noise. Hold up. Okay, guys. I had to bring it into the house. <laughs> I don't know what's up with neighbors that they don't seem to want to do anything until you go outside and then here they come making a noise. I'm just trying to change the view up a little bit y'all where y'all have a decent view. While I'm talking to y'all, I was just doing my little show and tell. So anyway, y'all know the little home villages, it's a little cool. In Nigeria, here's one of their little calendars. When I, oh yeah, it is actually a, a calendar. It was sent to me through my ex when he was coming back because he went to Nigeria for a visit. But that's his uncle right there, Reverend Martin. And I tell you, this guy, did so much for his community. He actually went to the United States, got his education and actually went back to Africa, was a Pan-Africanist and wrote his biography and said, 
that Africa is for Africans and that we need to come back and help build Africa. And he even brought back an African-American man who said that he was never coming back here to the United States because he felt like a man there. And that was in 1922. He ended up building a church, a hospital. We'll just say about 32 schools, two teachers' colleges. What's left now is one private school and one other school that's like connected to the church. So if the people that was educated at that school would have supported that school, all of the schools and the teachers college, it could have still functioned because his idea was to educate the people so they would get educated and go back to build their community. But instead, once they came to America, for the most part, they didn't go back. They set up camp here and they, they gonna die here and then have to do whatever they gotta do to get the body back after. But anyway, I really have him as one of my role models. And yes, I wanna leave my legacy too. And hopefully the people that I help will definitely turn around and help the next person. If not all of them, if just some of them do it, I would have served my purpose. I am Africa. I bought this from some little kids. I believe in Houston. <laughs> Let's say hi. They was doing a fundraiser. And I just thought they were so cute. I was just trying to help them out. Say back to my roots. As they travel to the motherland. Every year they had a trip. I don't know if they're doing it still since uh, Baba Shango, the founder, has gone to meet the ancestors. And for the people that like fabric, this is from the Gambia, uh, a wax resist dye print. I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it, y'all, but I can't wait to get back so <laughs> I can get more fabric and we can do all kind of cool things over there, me and the sisters and the brothers there. And what I wanted to say also, I saw Sona Jabate and Con well, she had a documentary yesterday and then she had a live where she did a, Q a Q and a So I was really impressed with the good work she was doing for the children in the, Gam in the Gambia. She has a, a music, well, a music academy, but they learn everything else there too. And that, of African-centered way. And she wants it to be the normal way in Africa. And she's just working so hard. So anyways, when I saw her documentary, I saw Suleiman Jabate, the guy that plays the choral song in my theme song, because it's actually, uh, it's a song that's made to honor my grandmother. And he describes what it's called when, when he's singing it, you know? And he, as a griot, which is a storyteller, they come from big storyteller families the Griot families, and all of those Jabotes are related. So that's why he was in Sona Jabotes' 
documentary because he was at the family home when she went there to visit. So I was like impressed that, wow, he performed a special concert for me to, to honor my grandmother. Well, you know, it's only in the motherland you can get griots to do things for you and can afford to pay for it and you're not a big shot, you know, with money and stuff, a lot of money. Just average money you can have people. That's professionals play for you. And he even played sitting on the floor, which is the traditional way. And he was wearing his traditional clothing. So it was wonderful. And then I saw Tata Jabate, who is also a griot. And he's my friend. I got to meet him when I was in the Gambia the first time I went. I even got to visit him at his house. It's just things, little things that you can do when you're in the motherland that you can't do anywhere else. I remember when I was in Ghana and I walked with the chiefs. Sure, I was safe for him, a cool mansa for that day, you know, a chief. But y'all, it was so surreal to just be sitting there on my on my stool with the other female chiefs and for the president's wife to come and shake our hand and then the president Adam Mills to shake our hands. I was like in heaven, y'all. <laughs> if anything was one moment of heaven, that was it. So every time I think about going to the motherland, I get such a good feeling. And when I'm there, I get a good feeling. I'm not going to lie to y'all and say it's just good things happening because that's not true. Because I heard someone else trying to claim that they the only one telling people the truth. I've been telling y'all the truth since I started doing this. I told y'all in the first place, I get zero for doing this. <laughs> if anything is supportive, it's the wonderful uh, patrons I have in Patreon. Now, if you want to if anything I ever said is helpful to you, you're welcome to join the Patreon family. But as for YouTube, baby, zero. Maybe one day when I get lots of views, <laughs> I don't know what the algorithm takes. I don't know. Because I do my best and I just see other people's go through the roof for doing pretty much just re-showing someone else's video. <laughs> and making a comment. So I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. But I'm making this video for those out there that want to hear, and you know who you are. All I can say is when you're going back, just go back first to visit and then do a market analysis and you will know whenever you do come back, you will be ready to stay or whatever. Maybe you just have enough money to put in the bank and just enjoy yourself. If you just plant your food, you know, do sustainable living. I don't know because only you know what your plans are. But I just tell you, be careful. Do not give anybody your money. Before you go there, I promise you, that's a bad thing to do. I've done it. I don't even have my land cleared yet. It's just halfway there after all this time. And no, I don't know how anybody else's papers is because I'm not there, y'all, looking at their paperwork. I'm just talking about me, y'all. That's all. And I'm just telling y'all, so if y'all do that, then y'all can't say she didn't tell me. 
I'm telling y'all for free. Don't give your money to nobody. Don't go into a business with anybody. If you can't afford to go into business you want, don't do it yet. Save some more money. As you can do not know the other person's ethics. And you don't know if they'll help even <laughs> help you go out of business even twice as fast. But anyway, guys, all I know when I'm going back, I'm going to take the little spices that I need and the books to get started. I'm still working on getting things together. I have to find a shipper just to ship some of those books back too. Because I know I can't put everything in my suitcase. Because just to say cookbooks and books on doing other things, Al heavy <laughs> very heavy but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the show and tell the little advice i hope you have a wonderful day and until next time peace peace power to the people and i'm out y'all bye